This is Eric Stoltz. He plays Marty McFly in the hit film trilogy Back to the Future. He go on to become one of Hollywood's biggest stars, dominating the decade and the next with huge blockbuster movies and massive TV roles. He is now today an American treasure. Now, if you had a DeLorean today, you could trace your way back to a time where that reality was slowly coalescing. It existed. The time where Back to the Future was a very different movie, and this guy, Michael J. Fox, was just another kid on a TV show. A time when Crispin Glover didn't just star in one Back to the Future movie, he starred in all three. A time where he didn't end up suing and winning against the very studio that gave him the role. This is the story of just how close we got to those realities. The story of what went wrong with Marty McFly and what really went wrong with George McFly and the actor that played him. You were wrong. Without just cause or provocation, you denied me permission to do something I have every right in the world to do. Back to the Future was the brainchild of Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale, with some eventual help from Steven Spielberg. But it was not an idea the world loved right away. In fact, almost every studio the two took the idea to absolutely hated it. The script was passed on over 40 times before finally getting made. Some thought the movie was too immature for mass audiences, others, like Disney, thought the movie was too inappropriate because, you know, this is his mom. But when it was finally picked up by Universal, two people were cast as the leads. Crispin Glover as Marty's dad, George McFly, and Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly and filming would finally get underway. You've probably heard of method acting. It's a form of acting where you essentially eat, sleep, and breathe the character. On and off set, you become that person. You're always acting. It's intense, but the people who practice it swear by it. It's what led to performances like this. Well, Eric Stoltz, prior to Back to the Future, was known as a dramatic method actor. He took on serious dramatic roles and treated the jobs and characters equally as seriously. Which sounds great. What could possibly make for a better Marty McFly than a guy who envelops everything about him every second of every day? Well, apparently a lot of things could have been better. Back to the Future shot for six weeks with Eric Stoltz as Marty. The movie itself would only take about 13 weeks to shoot in its final form, so this was a long stretch. Half the length of a lot of movie shooting times. And at about that six week mark, almost everyone on the set of Back to the Future looked around and said the same thing. This isn't working. And he showed me the first five weeks of footage cut together, and he just said, I don't think we're getting the laughs that I was hoping we, we, we would get. See, for Stoltz, he wasn't the first choice. Michael J. Fox was, but he was busy shooting Family Ties at the time and couldn't take the role. But things got so bad that the studio panicked. Stoltz wasn't bad necessarily, but he was treating a hoverboard riding guitar playing class skipper with the same seriousness as De Niro in a gangster movie. Shockingly, everyone quickly realized Eric Stoltz wasn't funny. So unfunny that the studio spent $4 million to replace him. So they went to the execs on Family Ties and begged for Michael J. Fox, and eventually worked out one of the craziest shooting deals you'll ever see. Michael would shoot Family Ties, his show, on weekdays and Back to the Future on weekends. Oh, and every single night of the week. He'd be picked up from set on Family Ties, driven to Universal's lot, he'd film till 4 a.m., be driven home, sometimes literally carried into his bed, and then picked back up, again, literally carried out of his bed by a production assistant into another truck at 6 a.m. to shoot Family Ties the next day. Fox says he got two hours of sleep a night on average for three months. But things went a bit different for George McFly. I hey, see you later, Pop. Woo. Come on, time to change that oil. <laughs> Crispin Glover wasn't just good as Marty's dad, George, in the original Back to the Future. He was exceptional. He was funny, energetic, and most importantly, the perfect person to portray a weak, mild-mannered father. His performance in the original film is one of the best in the trilogy. But his character and his role in the franchise is one of the strangest stories in film to this day. First, it starts with what happened in the first film. Glover did not like the original ending. At the end of that film, the characters return to the present wealthier, in a nicer house with nicer cars, nicer clothes, greater success. And Glover thought this reduced the message of Back to the Future to money buys happiness. So he voiced his concern, apparently quite loudly, to both producers and the directors of the film. 
and come contract time for part two, well, things went just as poorly. Bob Gale would say that Glover asked for as much money as Michael J. Fox. The studio said no, and Glover threw a fit. Crispin Glover says he asked for as much money as Biff's actor and got half. Glover said no, the studio threw a fit. Regardless, Glover wouldn't return for part two, but that's actually where the story really gets weird. Like, kind of creepy weird. Bob Gale. Yeah, Bob uh, Gale was on. Yeah, yeah, I think I listened to it. And he, on your show, he lied. He lied about Did some. He? Yeah, and you guys automatically believed what he said. Oh, man, <laughs> You may have seen this scene from Back to the Future Part 2. Here, Marty's dad hangs upside down in the doorway because he's hurt his back. And this is apparently how the doctor recommends he'd fix it. Well, that's actually kind of sort of Crispin Glover, who, remember, refused to appear in the movie. Instead of announcing a recasting, Universal decided they tried to hide Crispin Glover's departure. They casted Jeffrey Wiseman as the new George McFly, a move that even the actors on set weren't happy with. Leah Thompson stayed away from him on set out of loyalty to Glover, and the first words out of Michael J. Fox's mouth upon meeting Wiseman was apparently, quote, Crispin ain't gonna like this, unquote. And there's a reason for that. The lengths they went to trick moviegoers was strange. The beginning of the first film starts with Crispin Glover as older George McFly. So the studio had to get moldings of George's face to do the makeup and get him in it every single day, George being Glover. But for part two, they actually took the moldings of Glover's face from part one and put the new actor inside a prosthetic made of Glover's face molds, and then spliced in footage of Glover from part one to make it look more real. They literally put Crispin Glover's face onto another human being. And then, when that didn't look convincing enough, they decided to write in a back injury and literally hang him upside down in hopes that the audience would have a tougher time telling the difference. Yep, that is why this scene exists. And this is a big deal because the split between Crispin Glover and Bob Gale, Robert Zemeckis, and Universal was not amicable. Crispin Glover held a lot of hate for the studio immediately thereafter and still to this day. He did not sign off or approve of his likeness being used for part two as a result. So when he saw part two and realized, wait, that's me, he was angry. So angry he decided to risk his place in the industry and sue the studio. A lawsuit, by the way, he won. A landmark decision that would prevent movie studios from ever doing something like that again in the future. Literally changed how the industry operated. While Eric Stoltz just didn't have the comedic chops to cut it as Marty, Crispin Glover was almost rebuilt from the ground up. Back to the Future and Back to the Future, what these movies are are great examples of how important it is to identify when things aren't right before it's too late. And well, ironically, that just might be the message of these very movies. Maybe Universal had a DeLorean of their own? Or hey, maybe Crispin Glover was just sick of this. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly thing. That is it for this episode of Nerdstalgic. If you enjoyed the video, press that like button down below. And if you haven't yet done so, also hit subscribe. That'll make sure you don't miss anything I put out on this channel. And also hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. That's just a notification bell. Just make sure you're actually notified when I upload. It helps me out a lot, it helps you out too. So hit subscribe and the little bell. Now really quickly, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an amazing website builder, a tool that I'm actually currently in the process of using for something for you guys, for websites, to online stores, marketing tools, analytics. Squarespace is basically an all-in-one platform designed to make sure your online presence or your business gets off the ground and runs smoothly. It is things like simultaneous posting, which means that you can authenticate your social media profiles and post across everything, including your website, all at once. It has audio blocks to support podcasting, which I have an announcement about soon. You can give multiple people and contributors selective access to your site's website manager, meaning that if you want some help running your site, if you want to do something even bigger and you need a team, you can do that as well. This is an amazing website builder, something that I would not endorse if I wasn't using it. I am currently right now building something special for you guys on Squarespace. You'll see that soon. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to actually launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash nerdstalgic to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And on your screen right now are two other episodes of Nerdstalgic. You can click on either of these to see something I've done recently. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video.